Thanks. Cool. Okay. Welcome everyone to a quick demo of enabling a web application firewall using Nginx Ingress on your GitLab Kubernetes cluster. So right today we'll be demonstrating a um, kind of the first iteration of this, which is currently in an open merge request and it's not super flexible. And so primarily I just want to show what we've got here so we can get some feedback and decide if we want to ship what we've got or keep iterating on this a little bit. So um, before I get started, are there any questions? Cool. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'm gonna use my big monitor, so let me know if this is readable. You probably don't need to, well, okay. Yeah, you, you do need to read the uh, terminal over here. Is everything clear? If you can make the text a little bit bigger there, that'd be helpful. Sure. All right. So right now, this is just uh, tailing the logs of my uh, GDK and Kubernetes log. So none of this matters quite yet. OK, so I've got uh, my GDK running here and Kubernetes clusters via GCP. So let's go ahead and create a project first. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the default template here. So I will just create a Node.js project. And creatively call it Node. Cool. So we're going to initialize the project. We're using Auto DevOps in this case, so it's going to kick off. And Auto DevOps is enabled by default, but that means that it's enabled to execute. No pipeline will initially start. Um, it's kind of like an experience baseline here, so this will be fun. I'm also going to speed things along in our pipeline, so I'm going to open up the CI CD configuration for my project and define some variables to disable some jobs. You do this as a public project, but um, is there any uh, difference if it's a private project? No, it just means I don't have to worry about permissions as much. Um, as far as I can, so some of these screens would be less accessible, um, but that's about it. Cool. Lucas, so these, is what you're doing part of the demo, or is that what we intend to have users do as well? This right here is just part of the demo because it takes too long to run a pipeline with all these jobs enabled. Got it. What we're doing. So I don't, I don't need any of these things. I don't need container scanning, dependency scanning, license management, performance testing, code quality. And by defining these here, I could also define these in a pipeline run. But um, when I run the pipeline now, none of these jobs will execute. I left SAST enabled because it takes about 50 seconds with this default one. And you can see at least one of them run. OK, so we're going to go into our Kubernetes page here. And this is assuming that you already have your um, GCP credentials registered with your instance, which is a separate process, but well documented. We're going to add a cluster to our project. And again, this is just adding the cluster initially. and call it test. I'm going to use this project. Zone doesn't really matter. I'm just going to choose the one closest to me so things are ideally faster. And GitLab Managed Cluster is an important one here. This means that we'll be able to install applications. If we do not do this, then you need to install things like Helm or Tiller yourself. OK, so it's going to start creating this cluster. Uh, as you can see here, cluster provision worker, background job kicked off. And I believe this part takes about two and a half minutes. So we'll keep an eye on this page. And I'm going to go ahead and open up 
sidekick just so I can see when this job starts running. Cool. So it's waiting for cluster creation and then the cluster job is gonna kick off in one minute to ensure that the cluster is created. We could also just refresh our cluster page over here until L. Charles test shows up, but no big deal there. Okay, so next steps here. This currently is all standard process for creating a cluster um, for your project. Once this finishes, we're going to install Helm Tiller so we can install our applications on the cluster. We're going to install a runner. And the cool thing about Auto DevOps here is that you can actually install your runner directly on your cluster, so you don't need to run a runner locally to execute your pipeline. And then once the runner is installed, we can actually kick off our pipeline here, which will deploy our application up to our cluster. All right, 16 seconds. Okay, you can see my cluster is being created down here. And um, this is really just to keep an eye on things should never really have to visit the uh, cloud console. But I'll just go ahead and open this anyway. Because right now, this is nothing unique to the demo that you're trying to show, right? This is just the normal cluster creation workflow. None of the WAP stuff is being done right now. That's right, yeah. Okay. Cool. But even with the WAP stuff, um, you shouldn't need to use Google Cloud Console for that as well, okay. which I'll. Right. Okay, our wait for cluster worker is fired, so any minute now we should see our cluster. All right. Okay, so our, in, our cluster is created. We're using this for all environments, so the environment scope is Asterisk, now we need to install our applications. This first one, Helm Tiller, is kind of like the, the manager of all the applications. So we're gonna install that. That should take 30 seconds or so. And once we have Helm installed, then we will be able to install all these other ones, which is why they're grayed out. Or as this beautiful text here describes. Now the uh, mod security firewall is currently a, it's a supported plugin of the Ingress controller here. So to so internally, what we're doing, we're we're enabling this, will be setting a configuration on this application itself. So the current way that this works is that we've annotated the Helm chart that runs Ingress here to install it with this additional setting. And what it does is it basically copies the mod security module into the Nginx configuration. Now we need our, as I said, we need our runner. So we're gonna install a runner here to actually push our code up and we'll install Ingress. Um, in the future, we can also install Knative instead here for a um, another Ingress uh, option. So you can install either Ingress or Knative to actually have an, um, your initial well, Ingress point into your cluster. And it, it doesn't matter whether you do the runner first or the ingress controller? I don't believe it does because they're, those two are pretty separate. Um, there, there's things like, like Jupyter here. Jupyter cannot be installed until you install ingress first. But these should be able to install separate. I'm also going to install Prometheus. This isn't really necessary for the demo, but it'll give us a pretty chart so we can see that. And as soon as ingress finishes here, um, we need a base domain here for our auto deploy work. So we're going to copy the endpoint generated by Ingress into our base domain, and then we can fire off our CI pipeline job. Yeah. 
And as you can see over on the left here, this is our Kubernetes log. It's basically a subset of the GDK log here, but related to jobs associated with clusters. So it just provides an easy way of debugging exactly what's going on in this screen. So our, we installed an application here for um, Helm, app name Helm, that went, went okay. Uh, begin install, install the runner, installed Ingress, installed Prometheus, and there's our Ingress endpoint. So we're gonna copy that endpoint, put here, and we're gonna use NIP.io. Um, for those unfamiliar, NIP.io is basically like a, it's a public uh, endpoint that someone made that just provides a wildcard uh, SSL cert to your own, uh, to different IP addresses. So it can just be a convenient way to do HTTPS over random IPs. Okay, so we've saved our base domain here. I'm gonna copy this for use later. Sorry, there is a lawnmower near me, so I hope that's not too loud. And we're going to our CD configuration to run our pipeline. And you're running this initial pipeline, Lucas, just to get the app deployed initially, correct? Yep, that's right. Cool. Now the uh, initial implementation of this too, at least with the, the merge request that's currently out, wraps the additional changes to the Ingress Helm chart in a feature flag. So currently we have this on a feature flag in the merge request, and that means that um, it's currently off by default, but a user could either enable or disable that feature flag to enable the, depl the deployment of Ingress with mod security enabled. Uh, that said, it's a feature flag around the deployment of that chart, not the actual feature. So if they flip the feature flag after they deployed, then it's not really going to do anything unless they uninstall the app and reinstall it. Right. And this production job right here, when I mentioned before, you need to set the base domain for the cluster. If I had not done that, then this production job here would fail because there's no base domain set. Got cool. It. Build basically just runs Docker build on the container if there's a Docker file present. So it auto built the app. Again, auto DevOps is pretty cool because um, I don't have to do any of that. SAS is going to run like 50 seconds or so. I think test is like a minute long and then production should be pretty quick. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, while we're doing that, I'll pop over here and get my cube control cement command set up. Um, I have gcloud tools installed, so I'm gonna run a quick gcloud task here, which is, whoops, there we go. I'm running gcloud container clusters get credentials and the name of my cluster. And so it's installing the credentials for my cluster locally, just a convenient way of doing this now. Now, because the app isn't deployed yet, we only see two Kubernetes namespaces, GitLab Managed Apps, which is a namespace we use for installing those apps we saw before. See Tiller here, Runner, Prometheus, and Ingress. Cube System is a uh, Kubernetes namespace that's, divine, that's specifically defined for Kubernetes internal services, so we don't have to worry about any of those. Uh, things like DNS, and proxies, and FluentD. Now, once this pr production task runs here, we will see a third namespace for our actual application. Additionally, during this production task, and let's go ahead and take a look at what it's doing, it's updating our Ingress service with the location of the app so Ingress knows how to properly forward requests to our application. Now when this finishes, 
we can pop back over to our environments page here. And environments page should list our deployed production app. Hopefully this loads quicker so you see an empty state screen before this finishes, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, cool. So production, no deployments yet. But when this finishes, then it will give us the endpoint for our application. Cool, so pipeline finished. There it is. I believe it will have one, yep, one instance by default here. And if I click this, you may not be able to say on the bottom of the screen, this will open the pod logs. So I'm gonna go ahead and open those in another tab. And this button right here opens our live environment. So you can see that our application is deployed. Um, any other applications on the cluster will be deployed as subdomains of that. So we're just gonna curl this to make things a bit easier. and ignore the invalid cert. I'm also gonna use I for keeping our headers around. And here's our pod logs. So as you can see, uh, this will go ahead and refresh as I'm making these here, requests, see more here. So the original idea was put pod logs here, there's still a ticket for that, but um, currently this is just the, uh, it's tailing the Nginx um, access log, I think. Yeah, cool, okay, so let's go and run this again, and then we're going to see the new namespace. There we go. So I'm running kubectl get pods all namespaces. This is currently the two pods that were created by our deployments. We have a Postgres one and the actual application. And then this is the one we're really interested in here. So we're going to copy the name of our inject ingress controller pod. And I'm going to do a Q control and GitLab managed apps. Uh, execute, I'm just going to open up bash on that specific pod. And let's tail var log. So this is the default directory where uh, modsec audit logs are stored. And by default, nothing is happening, which is good. These are fairly innocuous requests. But then let's do something weird. So I'm going to send a request with a little SQL injection here in the params. And again, passive mode means it will ignore this but as you can see, we just got some noise out of our log. So the rather, uh, well, I've been saying esoteric <laughs> uh, logging format they use here, uses these um, groupings here, A, B, C, D, F, which I'm gonna open this up to actually figure out what these sections are. So our request bodies in C, um, H is our audit log trailer, et cetera. So each one of these sections is broken out for analysis here. Uh, we can also determine that this is the same request here because if we look for our e tag, that e tag matches the one right here. So, this is the current approach that this would work. Um, you can tail off this log. You don't really have to even log into the container. You can do something like tail f or log mod set audit log and just keep track of that. And then we can run some more requests. Can, I guess, can, can you open the, um, the logs of the, the express pod instead in your browser? Sure. Because I, di I didn't see this request that was logged here. Oh, because it was not refreshed. Okay, it's there, perfect. Yeah, unfortunately, um, and I don't, I'm, I expect there's a ticket for this, but currently you have to manually refresh pod logs, um, okay. which isn't great, but yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And just to show you, where's this? Um, this is the current magic code that's doing this whole thing. Just to pull this up quickly which is fairly simple. Um, it's modifying this default chart here. Well, 
maybe this is a bit of a digression. Uh, any questions for now? Um, couple questions, but first, I mean, this is this is great, Lucas. Thank you for going through the demo. This really helps, you know, make it real what it's going to look like, what the experience is going to look like. Um, so is the only way that a user would be able to view those logs be to essentially use G Cloud to get credentials, then use Cube Control to tail that file manually then? Yeah, uh, so, so you could also use, where is it? Um, it's here. You can use um, Google Cloud console to log in. Uh, so, uh, there it is, Cloud Shell, that's, that's what it's called. So you start Cloud Shell, you can go in that way, but yes, that's, that's pretty much it. You have to open a terminal to your ingress controller and tail this file. Uh, there's a couple ways to modify that, but um, not with our current ingress uh, charts. Mm. So this is this this here on the bottom left here is the, um, the the default chart we use for ingress, and the modification would basically be this involves say config able mod security true. Um, unfortunately, there's enable mod security and something like oh it's up here um, enable mod security OWASP mod security CRS which enables the default rule set. Um, there, there's like a third option that's something like mod security snippet. And then you can do whatever you want in here and write some Lua, but, or, uh, Nginx syntax, but, um, it's not currently supported upstream by what we're depending on. And I don't know if we want to fully fork anything to get there. So currently what I have is I have. Um, I'm wrapping the YAML parsing inside the actual model, sticking behind a feature flag, and then it adds these specific values. So again, this could ship 12.3 if we want. It doesn't get very far. Um, I've been looking at this a while, so I, I'm very curious to hear opinions from everyone on the call. Is is this like really a, a pain to have to like tail this log off like off the controller, or is this? standard operating procedure for checking security risks on your Kubernetes instance. Well, so, I mean, we're, we're definitely not done here with the state that the demo is currently in. Cause yeah, like you said, this is, it's going to be some extra steps to go through and tail that log file. Um, I think before we ever get to a state where we would consider it, you know, viable maturity, that type of thing, we're going to need to do some work to make this easier. Uh, that said, I mean, for our very first iteration of WAF that, none of our users have ever seen before. I think this is a great first step, um, you know, to show our direction. And today users have no visibility into this. Like granted, this is going to be some efforts going to be required to get here, but there's no way that they can get this sort of visibility themselves. Um, so I think this is actually really, really good for a first iteration. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, any other comments before I? Yeah, Lucas, can you just uh, walk through with the current implementation how you would go about changing those firewall rules, like making a whitelist or? You cannot currently. Okay. Um, the, the and I guess that that's what I'm talking about here is the um, there's basically two options that our current Ingers controller chart supports, and that is the um, these two settings. It's either um, enable mod security here or enable OWASP mod security CRS, which just turns the rules on in passive mode. Um, the idea of adding your own rules, we either need to fork this chart or there, there's an open MR for adding a bit more support here, but it's um, it's been open since March and it hasn't been merged yet. So I don't know when that's gonna happen. But once that gets merged, then we can update our chart and ship it out with whenever the next release is for that. Um, that, that said too, our ingress controllers are, is currently depending on pretty old version. This year it's tag 10. It, I think the newest is like tag 28, 
or 0.28 or something. So we have a quite old ingress controller um, uh, image that we're depending on. I don't think the rules have changed in that time, but probably a lot of other things have. So I'll need to talk to the monitor team because I think they depend heavily on that chart for monitoring to determine exactly what the fallout is of updating that. Hopefully there's none and we've just not been looking. Um, Lucas, question about the, the YAML file you're sharing on the bottom left. Is that something that we would expect users to modify? Like, do they look at that file today or is that something that we keep uh, on our back end just now? Yeah, we, so we keep this and I'm gonna, I'll pull this up because it's, it's kind of good to get a idea of what the structure of this project kind of looks like. So we, could, we currently keep a vendor directory within our um, code base here of uh, charts. And so we have a Prometheus chart, a Jupyter chart, the runner chart, and in a few cases they're customized. So um, we'll take a look at the runner chart. And this one depends on, um, um, it's actually defining the model, but it depends on the uh, upstream chart. So there's actually runner charts or charts Runner, lab charts. Yeah, we, we actually maintain a chart for this. Um, separately though, the vendor directory has the specific ingress chart, which is the one that I have pulled up there. And this is loaded via the controller in our applications ingress model. So this basically just opens up the YAML file. And um, in my case, it does this on, on the left here, it merges on the configuration file. And this is just to hide behind the feature flag because business logic in YAML sucks. So um, that, that's our approach really. Like modeling this architecture wise, we have our applications defined within our um, cluster models here. And we can define a separate application that way. The only issue with defining a separate application in this case is that we're essentially modifying an existing application. And that's why it gets a bit tricky in terms of how we actually want to maintain that. Got it. Makes sense. And it's it's annoying because like I feel like it's difficult to do this demo without getting really in the weeds, but that's kind of the whole problem. <laughs> so yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the, the first step. So now that we're in the weeds, we'll, uh, we'll work on coming up a level for, for future iterations, right? Yeah, sounds good. And if anyone um, has some Helm experience, I'd be happy to have a chat on splitting this out and anyone's opinions would be awesome to get some feedback on. Okay. Um, any last questions? I think I'm good. Cool. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank all you. in the recording. Thanks, all. Thanks, Lucas.